Hello everyone, it's Dr. G. Guess what? We are on the last third of the Titanic analysis that you're doing. Hey, and I hope you're doing well today and that things have gone okay with your descriptive analysis and your correlation tables that you created for this assignment. So let's get started. Just another check-in. Do you have your survey in the field and what's your response rates? Make sure this is the time because we need to start analyzing your data for your research report ASAP. So make sure you send a reminder. Do what you need to do to get more people to take your survey. All right, so we've gone through the, the assignment several times, and today we are going to run a regression on your Titanic data set and use this process for your own survey analysis. Okay, so you're very familiar now with uh, the, the data analysis for prepping for the Titanic. Where we are at now, we are on part two, conducting a statistical regression analysis and using that worksheet. Now one note, Remember, for the assignment, turn in all of the pieces at once. You're going to turn in your data file, your workbook. You're going to turn in your three worksheets that we've been working on all at one time. If you turn them in uh, individually and come back and forth, it'll erase everything. So turn them in at all in one time. All right. So uh, as always, there are some how-tos in the... Uh, how to videos in Canvas in the assignment if you need more information on how to run these. Now, let's talk a little bit about regression. Regression is one of those statistical terms that we as marketers kind of sometimes we say it's the only model you ever need. It not, that, there's, there's lots of other statistics that we use too, but regression allows us to make predictions. And as marketers, we know we have um, a scientific field and a little bit of art. So what we want to do is we're always trying to predict an outcome. So if you recall from our variables and uh, our variable video, um, the outcome is the dependent variable. So in marketing, it's going to be something like, um, pricing or amount, revenue, sales, maybe um, the outcome of willingness to buy or brand preference. And then what we have here is the model. And the model includes all of the independent variables that we believe are going to best fit or best predict the outcome. So this is right here what changes. So when we're trying to do a, when we're doing a regression model, we're trying to find the best model that will help us predict the outcome. And then there's always a little bit of error that we need to consider in our equation. So regression analysis is simply a process for estimating relationships between the dependent variable, often called the outcome variable, and one or more independent variables. And we often call these predictors in marketing and statistics. It could be covariates or it could be features in product marketing. So we attempt to predict the factors that are influencing an outcome. So as I I mentioned before you could you could say that um, your question is what factors are influencing this month's sales a typical marketing question so you might think okay maybe it's the price of a product the promotions we're doing the placement of ads as we know there could be a long long laundry list of independent variables here that would predict sales so our dependent variable is sales and in this case the model that we're running the independent variables price promotion and placement so it's as simple as that so let's talk a little bit about fitting the data modeling so depending on your question that you're answering in the outcome the importance of the outcome you might have uh, uh, different levels of tolerance of what you're going to want your model to be and we call this fit so fit is how well or how how closely do the does the model fit 
the outcome. So do we want a model that's a good fit, meaning it's really good, you're pretty happy with it, moderate or poor fit? Maybe, maybe um, it's it, a poor fit, you're not going to do it because it's just not strong enough. But maybe in some cases, um, like in, in creating an image or a series of image in copy or ad campaign, a moderate fit would be okay. But maybe if you're doing a pricing change that might, you know, last a while, you might want a good fit. So it's up to you as a researcher to decide what is it, what is the right fit for the question that you're answering. So how do you choose? Let's take an example here. Let's say it is getting to be flu season and you want to get a flu shot. There's a couple of flu shots out there. They might be, you know, you, you might decide, well, am I going to... Um, how important is it that I that that the flu vaccine fits the 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 entire population or the outcome that we're we're hoping that we don't get the flu? So we hope we don't get the flu. So the good fit of the model would be that closest to not getting the flu. A moderate fit is you're you know you're pretty likely to you know maybe half and half you know good odds. But a poor fit is, you know, don't bother, don't waste your time, it you might not even work. So you have to decide, maybe for me, I'd pick one of these two for my flu shot. Now, if it's polio, you might be, polio is a life-threatening disease. And maybe if you're getting the polo vaccine, and, you know, obviously everybody should have the polo vaccine, you might think, well... A poor fit just isn't good enough because this is life-threatening. I'm going to go with the best fit, the good fit. So this is how you choose. It depends on the, um, the, the importance of the decision. So we want to create a model that best predicts the outcome. So we look at our, our linear regression line has an equation just like the equation we show, the model equation and the explanatory or, or the, um, the dependent variable is on the y-axis and the dependent variable or the independent variable is on the x-axis. So in this case, you need to think about right here, let's say that our outcome is the red line. That's a perfect, perfect fit. So we want our outcome to be here. So you need to look at where the dots are. So these are the dots. Each one of these dots represents a independent variable um, data point. So let's say that you have uh, that, that promotion channel is the green. So the green doesn't have as much of a fit to the line as say, for example, price. Price might, you know, have a line. And then the red, I don't have what the red would depict here, but say the red is um, the product. So, so the product features. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to fit the model that best fits the regression line. So in this case, you might say, well, maybe I'm going to take out and rerun the regression. I'm going to take out promotion channel and maybe I'm just going to see if a better fit is the price and the product. So we run numerous um, regressions to see what the best predictor is. So let's talk about the Titanic. How would you use this in the Titanic? So the Titanic was coined the unsinkable ship when it went on its maiden voyage. So where there was a lot of hype that there's no way that this could ever sink. But some believe that this language was a curse that led to the ship's demise, while others believe that the crew's belief that the ship would not sink led to taking safely safety seriously. So many people have attempted to create predictive models based on the theory that women and children were encouraged to leave the ship first. Other theorists believe that those in third class or at the bottom of the ship were more likely to die because they were not, they didn't have a life raft. 
based on the data, let's run a model using passenger class, so whether it's first, second, or third, gender and age to see how much variance this data has and how much it explains. All right, so as always, you're going to go into your analyzer and select data analysis, then click on the regression in the list there, select OK. It's going to pop up another box and you need to use, you need to enter your dependent variable. Your dependent variable is you're going to select state. And now your ED, your independent variables are going to be age, gender, and passenger class. So the next thing you're going to want to do is set your confidence level to 95% because we want to be 95% confidence that our, 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 our statistics are accurate. We feel okay with that. And then we have the, um, you need to name your file regression. So it'll pop up in a new workbook. All right, so here's the model that you should get once you um, you run your regression and we need to ask the question can we predict the likelihood of dying with those three variables that we use so the first thing the output looks like this so you're going to get a regression statistics box it's going to be r square and we're going to look at the standard error. So R squares, the model indicates that gender and age account for 36.8% of the variance. So the closer we get to one here, the better our, our better our predictions are. So you need to decide, yeah, is 36% good enough? And then the standard error, so another thing that we looked at to see if it's a good fit is that it shows the precision of your regression analysis. So the smaller the number, the more certain you can be uh, about your regression equation. So the number isn't, you know, it's not very small actually. So you might think that, hmm, you know, I'm, I'm hoping like a standard error would be like a 0.001 or something like that. So you need to kind of take that into consideration is how strong is the model. All right, so here we've got significance level. So the significance F is less than 0.05%. Your model is okay. If it's greater than 0.05, you'd probably better choose another independent variable. So in this case, this is way bigger than 0.05, so it really isn't significant to us. So if you look at here, this would be like a regression, I mean a correlation. These are going to be the strength of each variable to the, the, the fit of the model. So in this case, the strongest variable is gender. Um, so you might want to do something that I would do is I would probably just run, uh, run the regression with gender alone without the other, the other pieces and see how that comes. Does this come up higher? Or maybe I do, um, gender and, uh, you know, I'm probably not going to do age is really low. And we saw this when we did our correlation as long as passenger class too. So in my opinion, maybe gender is the only one that sort of fits there, but this is what we do. We make um, decisions based on predictors that we're making. So let's look, how how well does passenger class and age fit our model? So I did this little um, p-plot uh, model in, in SPSS, but you can see that, you know, it's really... It's really not that bad here. You know, if, if you're thinking about living or dying, I might want this to be a little bit closer to the line if it's a life and death decision there. But that's another way that you can see because we looked at our, our linear model before and we are trying to find the model that is closest to this. It's a pretty good straight line, I'll tell you, but still probably not what I would do for, um, for uh, live or die. So, okay, you've learned how to run, reg run a regression and how to do a real simple analysis on it. That is exactly what I want you to do as part of your survey analysis or for your market research report. You are going to do one regression analysis. You can use as many predictor variables as you want. You can play with it, do more than one. Um, it's up to you, but I want you to, to play with analysis with your survey and try to come up with a predictive model 
model for your research report. So here's what I want you to do. Are you okay? Are you feeling comfortable about running and analyzing a regression table in Excel? Uh, remember, you can't have any blank any blanks in your data or it won't run. Um, and then are you ready to analyze your results for your marketing research project? So yeah, we finally come to the end of the Titanic analysis database, and I think you should be ready to start running your own data now. If you have any questions and comments, feel free to email me in Canvas, or as always, if you want to hear about more topics from the Marketing Doctor, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take care and have a great day.